Hi friends, welcome to Code Shana and in this video we are going to learn how to install Psycop G2. Now don't worry about that name, it may sound technical, it may sound well really weird but it is just an adapter for Postgres SQL library for Python. If you're working with a database related application or project then you are going to need a database handler for your project right you might have already seen or heard about mysql postgres sql lite so which one of these are you going to use well that is currently out of the scope of this video but i have covered it extensively in my flask application i have created a complete flask tutorial on my channel code jana please check it out if you want to learn how to make full flash crud application you can edit delete and update that application with the help of flask so i'm going to open that particular folder because i want to show you how this whole database thing works so it's right here code jana underscore flask let's right click it and open with code wonderful now i'm going to open my init file now don't worry if it looks hectic or all of these files look little odd just be with me for a while so here as you can see that we are working with sql alchemy database now sql alchemy is just a handler for the databases that you are going to use it makes it really easy to edit delete and update that database right from your terminal you don't have to actually type postgres commands as well if you want complete control on your database then yes you need to learn postgres sql but if you are making a simple web application then you need to learn few sql alchemy commands related to python and you are good to go and we are going to see it right here in this video so before going through all of that let me just clear some things here we have imported sql alchemy from flask sql alchemy module all right in that we actually need to specify the uri of our database if you're using sql lite then that's what you tell here so we are using postgres sql to work with our flask app and currently there are so many databases but popular ones are postgres sql and mysql all right so after defining which database you're going to use you need to have a username then a password and then specify the port number of the server that is going to use your database so obviously every server has a local host parameter so we are going to use this port number 5432 to initialize this postgres sql database again you don't need to go through all of that in this video if you're making a full-fledged application well that's when you need to know this so after this, this is the database name. Now let me tell you how to install Psycop G2 if you don't have it already. So let's just open our command prompt with control back tick, wonderful. And do a pip install. And I'm not going to type Psycop G2. I'm actually going to type Postgres. That's it. So I already have these uh, satisfied, that's why it said it. But I want you to take a look at these libraries that were installed. So Postgres, wonderful. And then Psycop G2 binary and Psycop G2 pool. So again, at this point, we need to look at PyPy website. So let's just say PyPy.org and type in Psycop G, Psycop G2, great. So now, if you were to initiate the psycop g2 command what will happen it will install psycop g2 only and then it will also install psycop g2 dash binary as you can see it is a standalone package that doesn't have external libraries all right so it may not even install postgres and you may have to install it additionally using pip install postgres so why go through all of that trouble and mind you i have done this i have used pip install psycop g2 and for some reason it fails and that's when i came to know that you need to install via pip install postgres if for some reason this pip install psycop g2 command doesn't work so if it's not working on your system if, if you're getting this pip installation error the psycop g2 cannot be installed then don't worry use pip install postgres command wonderful now that you're familiar with it on how to install postgres or psycop g2 in your system let me just show you what happens behind the scene to understand that click on this chrome button and then you need 
PG Admin. I hope you know this. PG Admin 4, well, that's the version number, is for visually looking at the database files that you have and managing your database visually. Now, on a server end, you don't need to do that. You don't actually have a GUI or graphical user interface on many systems. So, click on this download PG Admin. And then, well, there are a lot of options. So according to your system, you need to click on any of these options. So I'm going to click on Windows. Wonderful. So as of this recording, version 5.0 is released. Now, I already have a previous version of this software. So let's open this. PG Admin. And I have version 4. So let's click on it. And at the time of installation, PG Admin is going to, you know, ask you for a master password and that's what you set. In my system, it did not ask, but don't worry, it's because I've already been logged in the password. So at the top here, you can see that it has gone to localhost and then a different port and then access the browser. So let's click on these servers and this Postgres SQL group and in databases, now, which of these database am I using? That's why I cleared this whole path for you. So my database name is CJ Flask app. All right, let's look for it. So CJ Flask app, this, this right here. Now, again, don't get bogged down from this. Just be with me for a while. So in schemas, now what are we concerned about when we look at a database? Well, I hope you guessed it, it's tables. So we have just one table, the user. And again, don't worry about all of this. I want to show you actually these columns. So let's just click on this. And in columns, I have this ID, username, email, all of this. Now I'm going to right click this user. Then I'm going to view, edit data, and then all rows. So it is going to execute that query. It is going to you know, actually paste this code inside. And then here's the result. So I have these usernames in my Flask application. I have this email registered with them, this default image file, and then this hashed password. Then the date created on which these users were created. All of these information are actually being accepted by the client when he opens the website and registered for a new user. And that's the use of a database to give your client some option to save their information on your server. Now that was the GUI part. Now how do we access the same information using this Python terminal? Super easy. We don't need to actually access Postgres or PSQL command here. We can just use Python native SQL library for this. So for this, just type Python and make sure your virtual environment is active. Now we are currently in the Python shell. So I'm going to just type from code jana underscore flask. What I'm trying to say is this. Now I'm going to open my models.py file because all the information, this user class and these related variables, I hope you know that. And uh, that's why I opened this for you that these ID, username, email. Now how do we have these? Well, we have this because we have a models.py file telling it to create this. So what I'm trying to say here is from code jana underscore flask and let me just uh, scroll at the top. This is the command we want. So we are actually importing db database from code jana underscore flask. And how do we get this? We get this from our init underscore py file because we have initiated that db. So from code jana underscore flask, we are actually accessing this variable the instance of sql alchemy class all right so just be with me for a little more while click on this models.py again so from code john underscore flask import db so now we have imported that database now we want to go inside this models.py file so that we can access the classes inside of it so wonderful now that's just uh, from code jana underscore flask dot models import user now how do we get this well let's first of all scroll to the top 
and now let me open my routes.py file because that's where we are actually using this so from code john underscore flask dot models import user because we are accessing this user properties which are id username email image password date created we are using those properties in our routes.py file so from code john underscore flask dot models import user great so now if you want to access all the users means all the data inside that particular table you can do user.query.all press enter and all the information it is just like saying this from star from this particular table user grab everything so we have not mentioned which users information we want we want to grab everything so that's how we grab everything all right so what if i want to access this mythical user so user is called to user dot query dot filter underscore by and i'm going to type username equal to that's a keyword argument so that we can exactly know what we are accessing so username and now i want to access the mythical username press enter let's print out that user so wonderful we have got a flask sql alchemy query object okay so now what we can do is actually grab the first user that actually matches that username now obviously we currently have just one user that's that but well that's the syntax so you can type user dot first see so now we have got this specific information about mythical user the email the date created and then the user itself now what if i want to know the id of it once again you can just type user dot first and then dot and then id so that's why we couldn't get this you know get parameter working that we have used here because the id was actually two so if we could do this like user dot query dot get and get the user with the id two see we got the mythical user all right so that's just a little something on how you can access the values of your database using sql alchemy none of these commands are actually related to postgres that's a whole different dimension you need to learn it if you want to make your project well happy and dandy so if you gained anything from this video please like share and subscribe to code jana it is going to help me out a lot and for any queries the comment section is right below and make sure to check out the Flask project as well. It is going to help you create your basic application in Flask. All right. So thank you for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.